just just how I would stop breaking this apart is obviously at, at the basic level, um, and I'll, I'll take the high school and then we'll look at the middle school, is I need to understand what a rational and irrational number are. That is, that is knowledge I need to have in order to understand okay. the standard. I, I, would, I would think, right? Yes. Yes? I also think I need to understand something about addition and what a sum or a product of. Right, I, I need, and, 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 and a little bit beyond just knowledge of what a sum is, but some conceptual understanding of what addition truly is, right? Um, and then, you talking knowledge, right? No, yeah, I'm talking knowledge. Basic knowledge going into the problem. Basic knowledge going, or, or that I need to build if my students don't have it, or a starting point, or I would say irrational and irrational numbers, right? Um, I don't know that I would put some in this piece, but but you do really do need an understanding of what an addition problem really or a sum problem really is. So the uh, sum is the understanding of what's the skill. The skill then is this well, and I don't think there's necessarily a mathematical skill in this problem. The, So add fractions, you could put in there as a mathematical just scale. Explain why, which is really do you understand? Right. And what that and that between was between rational and irrational. And that's the process of reasoning. The explain why is the process of reasoning. I can you ask I can get at this objective that. without necessarily having a mathematical skill in that. I might ask them to add fractions and then say Right, why is this an irrational number? I'll explain why your sum of these is two irrational numbers. And now we're talking which we're talking the reasoning now, right? Yes. Okay. Which is the explain why. Mm -hmm. Ex explain it's the skill. result of that. It's like the skill that they can create their own example, like okay. So skill is lower than your knowledge. Uh, knowledge and skill are the same level. So when you are and so this is how I delineate. And knowledge is like a fact. I know what an irrational number is, right? That is a fact. I can I can give you the definition. That is knowledge. It can be good to take that piece. I would say the skill is adding fractions. The the mathematical routine procedure. Routine procedure, which are actually, if you look at uh, Marzano's new taxonomy, which I have in a second, are at the same level. That there really are just a repetition or a repeating of recall, right? I'm recalling how to do a procedure, right? The, the, the reasoning piece is the higher level piece, which is the explain why it is, right? I'm no longer identifying it being an irrational number. I'm explaining why it is an irrational number. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Yes? taxonomy. You know, those are all knowledge-based pieces. And then the reasoning is really the higher level piece that a lot of these objectives are asking for. Okay, does that make sense? Are we comfortable with that? It does. Counselor, just yeah. curious, is that an algebra one um, standard, I guess? I, I, I don't, don't know, because okay. I have to look at where it fits in the scope and okay. sequence. It was one that I randomly pulled out last night. So I would have to look at the scope and see, see where it is. No, I might. I think there's something about it in eighth grade. Yeah. No, actually, I almost know eighth grade by heart. We introduced the idea of distinguishing between rational and irrational. None of this explained why. Right. So we can this start is figuring out are you rational or are you irrational? Which, which is what we're saying is the knowledge base. Right. So in eighth We're grade, you're building the knowledge base of this now, explain why, which is now taking that reasoning piece. I suspect it is an algebra one. I suspect. So, 
So from that, that enables us to start leveling the standard, right? Um, and these are our levels, level three, four, and five. You can call them whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. It's just what we call them. Um, and it, I don't want to get into the grading conversation because when we bring up grades, it tends to get all people have different opinions. different opinions. But the three, four, five also works best, uh, quite well with like a C, B, A. But I, I don't want to get into that conversation because there's there's a lot of different pieces to that. I think where this is helpful in terms of leveling is just knowing what your students really need to be able to do, right? Which is to me a lot more important than the the grade piece. Could you uh, say some words about the word leveling? Uh, okay. So what I mean by leveling is basically what we just did, okay. taking that standard part and saying here are the lowest level skills in that standard or knowledge and then here is the reasoning piece and here's where I could even take that level that that standard to a higher level does that make sense okay so which is really this piece which is where we go from so a level three as, as we call it is really the knowledge of the mathematical skills for that standard so if a student were at grade level they should be at level three they should be at level four this would okay. be at standard because so now, because yeah. now I'm capable of doing the reasoning piece and the and the skill and put them both together. Some of the standards, like no irrational and rational numbers, right. you might not have this quite delineated in the same way. But I, we've always the way we do it is we look at level four being at standard, level three being. And I, the, the, I'm moving towards being on standards. I have the skills. I have the, the mathematical skills. I have the knowledge. I just can't put it all together in the reasoning way that I'm being asked to by the standard. Okay, level five would be can I take it to a higher level of reasoning? So that would be things like evaluate, right? Can I evaluate somebody else's work? Can I look at those kind of pieces associated with it? Okay, does that make sense? What it enables you to do is now write an assessment in which I can diagnose a student, which is the most important thing. If you're not here yet, right, if you don't have these knowledge and skills, you, you should not be able to get to here. You shouldn't be able to reason if you don't have these. So if you're showing me you don't have this piece, then I need to make sure you have that piece. I need to support you in gaining that piece. That's where I need to meet you as the student. If you're here, I need to see how you can take that skill to the higher level. Um, just having done some of this work, the tendency to hear is to make this mathematical, mathematically harder. So I'm gonna oversimplify this, but I add negatives to the problem. Because that makes it mathematically harder that's not the intent. The intent is to take it to the higher level of reasoning. So yes. yes, can I evaluate another student's work? Can I show where the mistakes are in that student's work? Those types of questions. This, and, and I think when we, when we start to write assessments, the natural tendency is I want to ask math questions. I want them to do math. I can ask these types of questions and then and, and, and I want them to explain their reasoning. I want them to explain themselves. Right? This might be a written piece. This might be a, a critique of somebody else's work. This might be a whatever else that might look like. Was that? Applying in a new situation, right? Um, it, it could be something, you know, mathematically, for example, um, factoring. Right? Factoring is covered in pre calc and uh, algebra 2, traditionally. Right? And uh, algebra 1 and uh, geometry in 8th grade, ninth grade. And they still don't know it when they get to pre calc, right? Okay. I forgot. So, so here's, here's what I would. Uh, and obviously, I think traditionally in 
pre-calc is maybe the first time they see factoring with um, cosine, sine, tangent, right? If I was writing an, an algebra 2, I might ask them to factor a problem with those problems in it. If you really understand factoring and what factoring is, it should not throw you for a loop when I put those notes, when I put that type of nomenclature in, right? All that kind of difference that changed in. But you have to really understand what factoring is. Trig identities. But if I really understand factoring, I should be able to do a trig identity within a factor without any problem. So when you see those identify the error problems, because they should be familiar with all of the ideas so that they can identify the error, you would say that's more of a level four? I would say that's a level five. If you're, I would say, but okay. it depends on your problem, but it should right. be a level five. And identifying an error or evaluating right. is a high level skill. Okay, thank you. Um, so I had a question too, Elster. Yeah. Sorry, I can interrupt. No, that's right. A level five. If if a student was trying to understand 